Good afternoon. I'm Amy Button Renz, President and CEO of the K-State Alumni Association, and I'm pleased that you will be joining us for our ninth Wildcat Chat that the association has been sponsoring since virtually last spring, and it is virtual. Uh, we want to keep uh, friends and alumni updated on all things K-State and provide you uh, today a behind the scenes look at what Dr. Frank Trace does with the K-State Marching Band. Uh, but of course, he does so much more than just the K-State Marching Band. He's a professor of music and the director of the bands at Kansas State University. At K-State, he coordinates undergraduate and graduate conducting activities, teaches classes in music education, and administers and guides all aspects of the K-State band program. And he's just returned uh, from working with 3,000 uh, band directors all over the country, and maybe he'll tell us a little bit about that. But I think one of the proudest moments for the K-State marching band was when the marching band received the Settler Trophy. Uh, that was in 2014, and it was just such a tremendous honor for them to be selected. And we're very pleased that we have a replica of the trophy at the K-State Alumni Association in our memorabilia room. So if you ever wanna come get your picture taken with that trophy, please don't hesitate to stop by. Uh, Dr. Trace received his doctorate in music education from the Ohio State University, a master's of music degree from the University of Wisconsin in Madison, and also a bachelor of music education from the Ohio State University. In addition to his countless honors and recognitions in the field of music, he also was honored in 2011 with the inaugural Wildcat Pride Award. Um, that award started in 2011 and we selected Dr. Trace and also Dr. Barry Flinchbaugh. And it was one of my favorite ev evenings of all time. And in the meantime, Dr. Flinchbaugh's family has, has, has endowed that particular program. But you were very deserving of that award and you do so much for the university, but also for the association. And, uh, about two years ago, I was asked to write an article about my thoughts about K-State homecoming, and I was supposed to share who my K-State heroes were. Well, my two K-State heroes were Dr. Frank Trace and Coach Bill Snyder, and that still holds today. So I'm so excited that you will be with us and sharing all things purple and everything about the K-State band. So take it away. Well, thank you, Amy. It is really good to be here and to be mentioned in the same chapter or, or novel that Bill Snyder is, is talked about is just beyond understanding and comprehension. I, it's just amazing. So thank you very, very much. It's just good to be here. Uh, we're, we're getting out of this COVID thing and we're looking forward to uh, going back face to face. And actually, you know, I'm looking forward to uh, 95 degree temperatures on the turf at the Memorial Field with uh, lots of uh, sweaty, smelly band kits. It's going to be good. Now, I, I looked through all of the questions and the comments that people made, and I divided up in some some areas here. And one of them was COVID related. And we, you know, we're just like everybody else. Uh, we're we're susceptible to all the uh, the downs and the feelings and the emotions that everybody had, and the band is as well. Because you took you took something was taken away from us that we couldn't do anymore that we really love. So we made the best of it. We did all the safety precautions with the concert ensembles and the basketball band and the football band six feet apart. We had bell covers. We had masks on. We had the puppy pads in the uh, stands where we played to empty the brass bit. You know, if I, if I had a hindsight's 2020, but I would have invested in the puppy pad thing there before we got into that. Cause we used thousands and thousands of those things. So we, we, we did everything we could. We stayed healthy. There were times when we had up to 20 kids with COVID and lots of them uh, exposed to that. So we were never at full strength. Uh, it got towards the end there where it started to get more dangerous and, and worse. So that's when we just didn't play at the last football game. And I, I called everything off because it was just not worth it uh, to put anybody's lives in danger or get these kids to go home and come back here and then get some more and then go back home and give it to their parents or grandparents. We didn't want that. So we got through it. Uh, we, we did everything that we needed to do. Um, we are ready for a great season. We're going to be ready for another great season. We're in the middle of recruiting and getting people signed up and all that sort of stuff that goes on in the summertime. And we're in the middle of that. We will have five twirlers. That was a question. Uh, and they are really good. We actually had 13 twirlers audition and they were all very, very good. So we have five outstanding twirlers. So you're going to see them on the field this year and they will be in various, uh, stages of the field that work together and work separately. It will be absolutely outstanding. And we're excited about that. Uh, the other big news that we have is we're, we're going back home to section 26. 
you know, the seats that we had uh, in the new facility were great. There's a lot more room. It's safer. I liked it because there was a bathroom very close, you know, and I, I, I enjoyed that. Had to have to go up a hundred stairs to get to the bathroom. There was running water there for our, for our hoses, for our water uh, stations. There was electricity. It was perfect. And we could see all the game, but we were missing some things. We were missing the emotional content and the impact that we have uh, with the students surrounding us. And then when coach, uh, Kleiman asked about that, and Gene Taylor said, hey, would you be interested in moving back home to Section 26? My response was, if there's a game tomorrow, we'll go back to Section 26, because we had an incredible impact. I mean, the home field advantage starts with the band, and it starts with the cheerleaders. It starts with all the fans and the students that we get riled up. So I think there's a video that talks about that, so maybe this would be a good time for, for us to show that uh, Section 26 video. What do you think? Hello, everyone. My name is Frank Trace. I'm director of the K-State Marching Band. The new seats over the band showcase are wonderful. They're absolutely outstanding, and it has been great. But there's been something missing. The one thing that we noticed and the students have noticed is that we don't have the influence over the student section, and we do not have the influence that we had in the atmosphere of the stadium in the past. So we would like to create that atmosphere in the bill once again that made us the envy of not just the Big 12, but the entire NCAA football. So we want to go home, section 26, here we come. A great environment it is here at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. And we were surrounded by students and we had a factor on the bench of the visiting team. We could get the Bill rocking pretty hard. Bill Snyder Family Stadium is rocking. One of the great benefits of going back to section 26 is the fact that we're surrounded by students and the students are the heartbeat and the soul of what goes on in the stadium is the band we can get things going and that's where you come in and help us with that and create that atmosphere most of you have been in the band before from the alumni band know what an influence we have on the stadium and this team and the so we're going back past the word it's going to be great looking forward to being in the bill from september That was a great video that Athletics put together, and uh, it, it, some of it was distorted a little bit. If you want to see it, if you go to the band website, it's on. There's a big icon that says Section 26. Just click that, and you could see it. But it's it's what you didn't hear of that is you, you didn't hear the Oklahoma State coach yelling the band when we played at the Oklahoma we played at Oklahoma State this year. I was we're in the North End Zone. I'm standing in front of them. all I could hear is drums. You know, at these football games, everybody in the world's telling us what to do and when to do it and all that. We try to do the best we can. I just lost track of where they were, and we played over maybe a snap or two, maybe a little bit. But uh, he, Mr. Gundy, got a little got a little uh, tense about that. But um, so we, you know, we're going to go back, and and I think we have uh, a, an advantage of of wrapping the students around us, and I think we could get that stadium rocking like it used to be in the old bill. And I'm sure that we're really excited about that. The others, the, the new seats that we're moving from were, were physically better for us. What's going to happen this year is this first year is a trial year. If it's going to work out and everything works out fine, then athletics is going to work with us to, to maneuver some things, change some things so that we're, we're uh, have a little bit more room for percussion. Uh, a lot, we have a lot of damage to instruments when we're in those seats because we're so packed in there. And those steel railings that come down the side, uh, you'll notice this year we're going to have foam wrapped around them because, uh, you know, on and off the field, 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 the kids are in a hurry to get on and off. So we kind of, they beat things up and it's, it's real, it's real tough on us. So we're going to take care of that, but yeah, we're, we're hoping to stay there. Uh, I'm excited about it because, you know, have just having a knee replaced, uh, there are no stairs for me to walk up. You know, I'll crawl up that podium and and perch on some stool there, and I'll be good for for the game. So it's going to be great. Uh, the future looks great. The stadium. Uh, the other future topic that many of you asked about was the band hall, and I'm pretty passionate about this. Uh, I've been here a long time. It's going to be my 29th year at K State. Uh, I've taught everything from elementary school to junior high to high school. I taught at uh, uh, Syracuse University for four years. I taught at Moorhead State in Kentucky for two years. Then I get a call from somebody at a place called Kansas State. First of all, I didn't know where Kansas was. I'd never heard of Kansas State. I thought I'd come here and get some big time experience for a year or two and then go back home to Ohio with all my family. And then, you know, I, I drank the Kool-Aid, man, the purple Kool-Aid. And it just, we fell in love with Kansas State, we fell in love with these students and this, this faculty and this, this uh, everybody, the Amy's and the Bill Snyder's. I mean, there were just so many class people here, great people that uh, it, it, we're state, it's home. You know, I tell people that, you know, we're here till retirement, death, or uh, 
assassination. One of those is going to happen. And maybe one or two of those almost did happen a few years back here. But uh, we're excited about the home, the possibility of taking West Stadium. There's about 17,000 square feet of just dirt and high humidity and heat in there right now. It would be a great place to build a band hall. The structure is there. The, the price to build this is 3.5 mil. And, and I know to me, that's like, oh my God, I mean, that's a heck of a lot of money. But when you consider all the other projects that are going on this campus and across this campus and what's going on, I, you know, it's not that much. And uh, if you're looking for an entity, a group of people, it's going to be hard to find some group of people on this campus that I think is, is as visible, as emotional, as, uh, as productive, as loved as this group of kids is. And they deserve a home. We're the only school in the Power Five conferences that doesn't have a, a home of their own, a place to rehearse. What I mean by that is when it's, the weather's outside is bad, or you know, lots of times we have to be inside to work music. It just works better if you're inside rather than outside. Uh, if McCain has an event, we can't, we can't use it. I understand that. So if it's raining or cold and nasty or lightning and we can't get McCain, we don't have practice. And this is, this is a class that 400 plus people pay for. So there's a problem right there. And, and I'm, you know, I've been at this a long time and been trying to push for this building for many, many years. And we're getting to the point now that, you know, the clock's ticking and I'd like to get this done. And what we're doing is the foundation universities has approved everything. They're working really hard to, to identify some people. I've been meeting with donors and, and showing people what we need. We put things out. We, we have not set up an account yet. And once we find that lead donor, that's somebody that could be the, the, the foundation of this building, then it opens up. And I am convinced that if everybody knew our story and saw our facilities, and you could go on our band website and click on a new home, you know, welcome home, I think the icon says. There's a video over there that I put together probably about two years ago. It was a Sunday afternoon. I was getting ready for something. I was real frustrated. And I called our manager and I said, hey, just follow me around with a video camera. And it's 17 minutes of me taking you every place that we store equipment, how we have to get there, what we have to do, where we rehearse, what we have to do to get this whole band together to get over to Bill Snyder Family Stadium or to a bowl trip or to a away game. It's an immense amount of, of truck movement, uh, of bodies, of time, and it shouldn't be that way. This is our chance. And, and this is a commercial for me, from me to you, uh, uh, to help to put this together. This will last a long time. This will last longer than I will. Uh, this will last a lot longer than any of us will be here, but it'll be something that generations of kids have worked hard for. They deserve this, and there'll be a following generations of kids that will enjoy it. Uh, it's it's something that we need to have happen. Uh, look, for, We'll look for some announcements here pretty soon. Hopefully, we're going to find that lead donor, and we'll open up and set that account up and get this thing going and build it. And, you know, my goal is to to stay here till we build this building and then enjoy it for a year or two. You know, I want to sit in my office at West Stadium and look out the window. If you've been in my office at McCain, we don't have any windows. So I just want to sit in that office after a band rehearsal and look out the window. And that would be just great. So the band hall is coming along. Uh, we're, we're pushing hard. We're doing everything we can. I'll visit anybody and anybody. I tell people all the time, if that lead donor is out there and, and you want to set this thing going and build and get that first gift in here to, to get the thing started, I promise you when I retire, I will be your lawn boy. I will come with my John Deere tractor 140 of a cup holder. I'll bring my own diet Pepsi. I'll even supply the gas. I'll cut your lawn for the rest of rest of time as long as I can, just to say thank you for that. So uh, in all seriousness, it's needed. It has to happen. Uh, we're going to go after it and do what we can to make sure that this does happen. So uh, the future looks great for this band. Uh, our returning rate of kids to be in the band um, for next year is at an all-time high. Our kids are so hungry to go back to being normal, you know, and I kind of laugh because I think I look at marching band, what we do and in the cold and the heat and the sweat, and we use water as a, it's a basic human need. We use it as a reward for crying out loud, you know, and, and these kids want to do this. And that is so exciting. They are so ready for this. You're going to see excitement from these band kids that is going to be unmatched ever. Uh, our first trip is to Dallas. We're going to Jerry's World, AT&T Stadium, and, and we're going to march in there in front of 80,000 people, the national TV audience. Could you imagine what it's like to be a freshman coming from Western Kansas or a band that has 15 kids in it? And you walk in here and there are 50, 60 trumpets 
and there's nine buses, that's more than your town for crying out loud. And then you're going to march in a stadium that's packed with 80,000 people, a, a jumbo video screen that's bigger than anything we've ever seen. And in a TV audience of how many hundreds of thousands or millions, it's unbelievable. What an experience for these kids. And so we're excited about this. Uh, uh, we're, we're going after, we're getting ready. We're coming out of this pandemic, you know, as, as uh, uh, President Myers told me before this started, right when it hit, you know, there's going to be a crisis and we can't waste the crisis or so never waste a crisis. Let's get some things done. So we did, we did the ban. I did my own life and I tried to do that with the students. So we're, we're going after this ban hall. And, and we're going to see if we can get this thing built. And as, as uh, my dad said a long time ago, you know, leave it better than you found it, kid. And that's what I'm trying to do here at Kansas State. So the student band experience, uh, the kids stay in the band a long time. And it's, it's major issue there is the Marching Pride Scholars. You know, Red Skelton uh, came up with this idea many, many years ago. And every junior and a senior gets an additional $500 scholarship because of donations. You know, we have a golf tournament. Uh, if you're interested in playing golf, it's July 10th. If you want to sponsor a hole or a cart or something, go to our website and click on the golf thing. We're constantly raising money and recruiting. That's what I do. You know, in my education, I look back, I was 5% of what I do every day I was prepared for. <laughs> the other 95, you make it up as you go along, and, and that's what we're doing. So uh, the kids are staying longer in the band. Our enrollment seems to be doing really, really well. We already have well over 300 kids signed up for band camp, and it's still June. So that's very early. We'll see. We'll hope that continues. Uh, we cap it at about 400. We've been that way for a long time. And the reason, you know, people say, well, it'd be cheaper if you had less kids. Well, it would be, but there would be less kids getting a great experience. This is a phenomenal experience. Uh, if as a parent, my kids were in it. Uh, and sometimes they didn't want to be, but I said, you're going to be in it because it's a great experience. They're running with good people. They're doing good things. They're helping others. It's everything that we need to do. And uh, we, we cap it at that, but we also have two basketball bands and we also have a volleyball band and three pub crawl bands. So we're spreading these kids all over the place. And they're, you know, we're playing at every athletic event at every pep rally that you could possibly imagine. You know, we started a tradition many, many years ago of uh, uh, we beat Texas. I can't remember what year it was. It had to be in the early nineties. And we beat Texas. We weren't supposed to. It was a way trip. So I, I, I got on the phone and we sent some messages out to kids that, uh, you know, could you meet at Veneer Football Complex with your instrument? Let's play a fight song for Coach Snyder and the team when they come home. You know, a couple dozen kids showed up. Well, that has grown to where 100 band kids are showing up, 200 band kids are showing up in the rain at 3 o'clock on a Sunday morning. You know, that, that's a special kid. That's a special human being that does that. The coaches appreciate all the players appreciate it. You know, that K-State mystique of the K-State family is something that nobody can really pinpoint and describe on the fact that you have to come here and you have to live this. And it's true. I can't tell you exactly what it is, but I can tell you what it feels like at three o'clock in the morning and Sunday morning in the rain in front of Veneer. We're coming home. We just beat Texas or Oklahoma. And there's 200 of my favorite college friends with brass and woodwind instruments and drums cheering for their team and for their school. Uh, th these are special, special people. This experience is, is amazing. We try to treat them very, very well. Uh, we make sure that they're well taken care of. You know, I tell them all the time, I don't ask them to do anything I myself wouldn't do. And that's kind of dangerous because I grew up in Cleveland. I grew up a lot differently than anybody in this band has. And so, you know, I'm right there with them. And uh, maybe some of you understand when you, when you get a little riper, a little more silver on top, it hurts a little bit more when the ball game's over. And I, I tell kids this all the time, you know, on game days, I'm 18 again. I am seriously 18 years old. It's just exciting. It's, it's the greatest part of the week. Once the game's over, uh, this 65 year old body lets me know that I'm not 18 anymore. But boy, it hurt so good and it was worth it. So it's one of those where these kids get a lot out of it. I get a lot out of it. Um, some people asked about scholarships. The Marching Pride Scholarships is an excellent way to keep those juniors and seniors in the band. That way they don't have to get as many part-time jobs. Here's the st statistic for you. These are full-time college students in the band. They have full-time loads of classes. And 62% of last year's marching band had part-time jobs outside of school. That's a kid that can time manage very well, that is motivated, that works very hard, that understands what it takes to succeed. What employer in this country doesn't want that kid? 
Everybody does. We need that, especially now. So the scholarships really help keep them in the band so they don't have to work more hours. Um, there are endowments for every section leader. Uh, you, you work your way up to a leadership position. The kids vote you in, you interview with us, you audition with us, and we pick the right people for the right jobs. And they get scholarship dollars just to keep them in the band because uh, it, it's, a, it's a difficult situation. So there's the excellence fund that you could contribute to that we have that goes towards uh, all kinds of things. You know, we just had a flood, you know, and it's a good thing we caught this because uh, the McCain construction downstairs, we sent some, some students down there to start looking at instruments and doing inventory again, making sure we're ready to go. And one of them come running back up here said there's water pouring out of the ceiling all over the trumpets and some other instruments. So uh, I didn't go down there, obviously, I'm not really good at stairs at that point, but uh, anyway, there was lots of damage about $4,000 worth of damage, a little bit more. Uh, the university quickly, I called Lolita Sump over at facilities and man, within minutes, there were people down there with humidifiers or dehumidifiers and fans. And then we took all the instruments out. We opened them up. We sent them out to be cleaned and all that again, because there was water in them. And some of the wooden cases, the cardboard cases were swollen. They, they were no good. So we did get some new cases, but the construction company uh, came right on top of things within minutes and, and, said, we'll take care of it. Don't worry about it. They did. So, you know, that crisis was over and we're on to the next crisis. So we do have that, that's been taken care of, but you know, I got to tell you that would not happen if we were in West stadium and we had all our instruments and all our uniforms and everything over in one building, it would be there. So we could take care of that. So uh, there were some questions about me. Um, I've been here a long time. This is my school. You know, I, I grew up a Buckeye, you know, if you still cut me deep enough, there's a little bit of scarlet and gray there but the purple has taken over my life. There, there's no question about that. So I'm here for the long haul. I did just have a right knee replacement five months ago. I'm doing great. Uh, I've got to get the left knee replaced. I'm trying to time it to do it maybe in January so we can get through the bowl game because we're going to a bowl game. You just put this on your calendar right now. We're going to a bowl game. There's no question about it. So um, I'm, I'm doing fine. Everybody's good. I got a grandson. My first grandson, Jessica, who used to be a feature tour in a band, has a has a little boy now. His name is his name is Caden. He's five months old, and I'm excited because because Amy, he's coming over Thursday. He's going to spend the weekend with me, so we're going to have a good time, see some things, and do some stuff. And he's starting to get to the point that he's starting to look like he wants to crawl. So uh, he's it's going to be great. So that grandpa thing is working really well in my life. What's my most memorable moment at K State? Boy, when it happens, I tell you, and then I wait for the next one to happen. I think the highlight of my football career was the victory against Oklahoma and Kansas city. That was the sweetest one because you know, if you were around for that, nobody gave us any chance whatsoever. Nothing. We got a little scuffle with the Oklahoma players at pregame, which was not my fault. It was their fault. And, and we ended up getting pushed around and all that. And I was angry as all get out. And there were what uh, out of 80,000 people, 70,000 red people in there. The rest were all purple. But we were underdogs there, but we beat them 35 to 7, and that was the sweetest victory of all of them. Uh, there have been lots of highlights. The Sudler Trophy was one because the Sudler Trophy to me is, uh, it, you know, it, we're not the best band in the country. Somebody else is going to decide how good we are. I know how good we are at the moment, and I know what we have to work on and what we have to do. But when your colleagues that are on a committee that have all earned that award before, and they look at a variety of videos that we have sent them and dozens of other bands have sent them and they pick us to be the winner of that award. That was a moment that will last forever for me because it, it, it takes a long time to get to that point. So many students and so many directors and so many grad students and assistants and faculty members were a part of this, that this was a team effort wasn't going to happen. So that's probably it. That has to be number one on my list because it was a big sigh of relief that finally we made it. We made it. And as anything else, you know, once you win the World Series, what do you want to do? I'm going to go back and win it again, right? So that, that's what we're trying to do. You can't win the award again. It's a one-time only, once-a-lifetime thing. But we do enjoy the quality that we had at that point. And we still do, and we still get better. So we're, we're, still, we're still doing all that. Um, there's some questions here about miscellaneous, about uh, people said you want to do the wave and get the band to do that. You know, I got to be honest with you, I won't do it. Because if you're doing the wave, you're not paying attention to what's on the field. And my job in front of that band, in front of, in that stadium, is to get the kids and the students to be a great home field advantage for our home team. And that means that we're a nuisance to the visiting team. We could do that really well. And I don't want to take the attention away from the field because the wave is attention to us as an ad audience in the band. 
It's got to be about what's happening on the field. I'm there. We go in that, that stadium every time we play a game, and my goal is let's win this. The band will do whatever we have to do to keep people's spirits up and keep it going. So I, I'm not a, a wave fan. Yes, the Yankeeville pub crawls are coming back. We're, we're getting the restaurants to buy into it right now, and the bars, we're getting that going. So we are coming back, and we are excited about that. Um, it, I always get the questions, too, about the, uh, you know, the no comma after – nation in the pledge of allegiance we go back and forth on that and stuff so i just we kind of change it up every other week to appease those that think it's one way versus the other um am i still submitting my halftime performances for the ad's to approve after the starship enterprise flew nope nope in fact i didn't do that very often after it happened um athletics has always been very positive and supporting us in fact our budget comes from entirely from athletics so they've been great to us. We've been great to them. And, and, and we have a mutual appreciation and respect for each other. There's no question about that. Um, the alumni band is coming together this year. They're coming back for the, uh, I think it's the second home game or the first home game in Manhattan uh, on September 11th. They're going to be back for that. Yes, they'll be back. Um, how many pieces of music and what do we prepare? We've been preparing music and getting ideas from students. You know, last year, we had a lot of ideas about salutes for halftime show and stuff. We're going to bring a couple of those back, but we're in a process of getting music arranged. Uh, the, the big deal now, which has become expensive for us, is the copyright issue. Uh, we have to pay for everything that we play. We have to pay for the rights to perform it and to rearrange it. Uh, some artists are really difficult uh, and expensive. Uh, you know, the, the rock, the prince, you can't play any of his music. His family won't allow it. Uh, There's some other ones out there that are very difficult to get to and very expensive. So we'll pay. And we just started paying the royal royalty fees for stuff we're arranging. I think we're up to $15,000 in paying royalty fees just to have our stuff arranged so that you could hear it in the stands and at halftime. So, you know, that's what we're doing now. We're doing the paperwork for that. Uh, we're doing the recruiting. We're running band camp right now, a music camp right here on campus for the first time in, in, in a year. We brought it back. And Dr. Wimmer is a great guy and he's doing that. So we're, we're, we're concentrating on that right now. And in, in, the, in the evenings and stuff, we're, weekends, we're, we're looking forward to the fall and getting things ready. We started our Stone Street truck delivery. We took the truck out to uh, Dodge City. And in Great Bend, or Great Bend, then Dodge City, we got some new seats put in the truck in Dodge City because we had that old uh, flat uh, bench seat in the front. And the last time we did this instrument delivery, I went with them. And after 12 hours of sitting in that truck, I said, okay, we got, we got to get this changed. <laughs> so we have the seats now that have the springy bounce that move with it so your back doesn't hurt and it's very supportive. So they dropped some instruments off. We got another round coming up in a couple of weeks to go to uh, Wichita, Emporia, Kansas City, Topeka, and then back to Manhattan to drop off instruments to kids. Uh, we have some early uniform um fitting for the seamstress to take care of some things we're going to start early because this year this camp we have two classes of freshmen if you think about it the sophomores coming back never marched they never marched on that's a whole different ball game and so they didn't get uniforms so we have a lot of people to fit so we're doing that during the summer on saturdays and on sundays the staff's coming up and we're getting them fit and we're sending it to um donna miller lives here in manhattan uh, she's she's a retired young lady that uh, always wants to help the band and we send her a couple hundred pair of trousers and and jackets to, to do so we're trying to break that up a little bit so she has a better chance of doing it she can feel her fingers after about three days so uh, she's doing wonderful so we are getting prepared we're we're expecting it to be same size same everything we're expecting a full house in bill snyder family stadium and we're expecting just just to have a, a great college band experience uh, not only for the students in the band, but for everybody that hears the band. It's it's just an exciting time to be here. You know, there's there's an old saying and that uh, uh, the comeback is stronger than the setback. And we've all been set back. And I'm telling you right now with the band, this comeback is going to be incredible. It's just going to be so much fun and and, and so, so good. It's, it's just going to be great that that first time we get together. So questions. Well, I have one question from the chat, and I'm sure it's coming from uh, a former tuba player or sousaphone player. Uh -oh. I want to know how many will you have in the band this next year? Our goal is 34, and that means that there's 32 on the field and there's two returning or two alternates. Uh, now, every section had a high percentage of returners. Uh, the tuba section took a hit because there's probably about eight to 10 of them that didn't come back to school. 
some joined the army, some went a different route. So we're going to have to work on that. Right now, I think we're up to 17 or 20 that have committed. So we, we will continue to work. And we're hoping that I, 32 tubas is a great foundation. I, I love the low brass sound. I love the look of that section. That section is a special section. I mean, just anybody that will wrap 40 pounds of tubing around your body and then blow enough air to fill up a sewer pipe for crying out loud in a hundred degree temperatures on AstroTurf while you're moving fast left and right and forward and backwards. Those are special people. Those are very special people. So yeah, tube, there's a, I have a special place in my heart for tuba players and we're going after them. Um, another question, um, Eric Stone Street donated the truck. Yes. And tell everyone, cause not everybody has probably seen it, what it looks like and how that came about and how it was delivered because the band didn't know about it. Yeah, Eric Stone Street is a special person. We go way back because I first met Eric Stone Street. I didn't know who he was, didn't know me. I think he was a, a waiter in Applebee's back in early 90s, mid 90s. And I used to take, at that time, my two girls in there and we'd, we'd go to eat and he would be the waiter. You know, he told me he was a drummer. I told him I was a drummer and all that stuff. So we ended up just social chat. Well, when he, when he made it big, he'd come to the football games and he'd come over and play with the band. He's a drummer. I've been to his house and he showed me his drum room where he collects these things. And he's a good drummer. And so he'd come into the band here and he'd sit down there and play or uh, so on and so forth. Well, the, the first time we had an Eric Stone Street experience was he called me after a November football game many years ago, maybe oh, 10, 12 years ago. And it was light drizzle. It was about 38 degrees and we don't have overcoats. We didn't have overcoats. And he asked why we didn't have overcoats. And to make a long story short, between him uh, and the president of the university, President Schultz, we ended up getting about $54,000 worth of heavy overcoats for the band to use based on Eric's generosity and President Schultz's generosity. So we have those. They're called Stone Streets now. We don't pass out overcoats. We pass out Stone Streets. They're, we give them every year. They got a number. They're quilted. They're big. There's like the football players wear at wintertime. Uh, the second one was uh, he called me up one time in January. He said, hey, uh, how is he texted? He said, how is your cat band drum set? And I text back. I said, Eric, it's old, wrinkled and worn, just like me. And he texts something back, says, I can't help you, but I got you a new DW drum set. It's on the way. Now, in the drum world, DW is the Rolls Royce of drum sets. Every rock and roll star has them. It's, it's the drum set to get. If you made it, you have a DW drum set. And we got this massive purple and silver and chrome drum set, double drum set, toms, the whole bit that we use at basketball games now. And if you go to basketball games, you'll see it. And that's the drum set that, that Eric Stone Street bought for us. And the truck thing was one of those after a, a, another a long day, uh, right after the new stadium was built. Brand new stadium was finished, you know, the enclosure and all that is beautiful. And he calls up and says, why do you bring that ugly yellow truck into the stadium at the end of the game? And I said, because you know, we, it's the only way we'd get the instruments there. And he said, well, if I get you a truck, you want to design it? And I started laughing. He goes, well, don't you have overcoats and a drum set? And I said, okay, we will. So we got some students to design the truck and we sent it to his friend at Dallas Truck Service in, in Dallas, Texas. And then a couple of days later, I get this drawing, this rendition of what the truck will look like. And then it hit me like, oh my God, we're going to get a truck. It's a 26 foot truck. It's beautiful. It's got a walnut floor in the storage area. It's got a mural inside. Uh, the outside is painted. It's got a lift and, and a, 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 a ramp. Uh, it's silver and purple and it's got a logos all over it. It's just phenomenal. And so uh, he, nobody knew about this. It's a well-kept secret. So I told the two managers, I flew them down to Dallas one uh, one evening before a bowl trip. And I said, drive it back, drive it back in the middle of the night. We don't want anybody to see it. And I thought with social media and everything that's going on, now, there's going to be tons of pictures of this truck coming back from Dallas, Texas to Manhattan. But apparently there wasn't. There wasn't. And so we parked it over at the ag facility there off of uh, by the stadium where the agricultural building is, where the cows are, the barns. We parked it between two barns. You couldn't see it. And then I called Eric and Eric, I, I said, boy, it'd be great if you could come and, and, and drive this up for this folks. And he brought his mom and dad. His mom was in the truck with him. His dad was in the a police car behind and we parked the truck. The kids didn't know. We parked it in front of the president's office. They were already at the bowl game and we were ready to drive there the next morning. We practiced an indoor facility. We fed them dinner. We had a meeting in all face chapel. 
and Eric was nowhere to be seen. And, and they didn't know anything about this. And I told the kids at all face chapel, I said, put your jackets on, take your cameras. Cause we don't allow phones in the band. We're together. It's the, you know, the old Bill Snyder thing. It's just, let's, let's disconnect from the world right now and just play band. And that's a good thing. So they've got their phones out. And I said, go line up the world war II circle. I said, you're going to want to take some pictures of this. And nobody knew what was going on. So we text Eric, he was in the truck and all of a sudden we didn't expect this. There's a campus policeman in front and a campus policeman in back with sirens and lights blaring. And all of a sudden they're coming down uh, uh, in front of Anderson Hall, the wrong way. And then they pull in to the circle there and then kids are staring and looking like, what the heck is this? Then they realize, you know, the truck on the front says K-State marching band has got a cat head, it's got a marching wheelie. And they're starting to buzz like, this is great. And then I heard somebody yell, Eric Stone Street is driving the truck. And then his mom were in the truck and they drove it by and came up. The back was open. The kids swarmed the truck and he was taking pictures with everybody. He came into the All Face Chapel and talked to the kids, gave him a great speech about dreaming and about rolling up your sleeves and working hard and doing that. Uh, and he bought him a truck. You know, so it's the Stone Street truck. It's what we, what we call it now as well. And then he, uh, he went on his way to the bowl game and we loaded up the buses and loaded up the truck with all the equipment. And drove it out. It's, it was a classic story. It's just uh, people like him are just phenomenal, just amazing people. I would totally agree. And we're very excited that Eric Stone Street will be the Grand Marshal for homecoming this this year. We The students selected him last year, but unfortunately, we didn't have a homecoming parade, but he will be leading our parade this year. Um, That's great to know. Well, well, we'll make sure that the truck is in the parade with the band then. That, that'll be perfect. Super. Um, I have a personal question. Uh, I've had the opportunity to get to know Gerilyn and your incredible daughters and share a little bit about your family and their uh, involvement with the band. And then Caden, he'll be a member of the band in 2039. That's right. That's right. We've already got his so application. Yep, yeah, absolutely. My wife is a saint. I met her at the University of Wisconsin. I went up there for a master's degree. And I tell people I got three things from the University of Wisconsin. I got a great degree. Uh, I learned how to drink beer because uh, not that I promote that, but if you don't know how to do that, you go to Madison, Wisconsin, they will teach you how to do that. And then I met my wife and we got married a couple years later. We've been married for, it's going to be 40 years this November. You believe that? You know, my kids have a hard time handling me for an hour and 50 minute rehearsal. My wife has lived with me for 40 years. And people ask me all the time, she is, she's a, she got a microbiology degree from the University of Wisconsin. She worked at laboratories for a number of years. Then we started the family and she stayed at home with them. And uh, she's just a wonderful person. She's the, she's the brains of the outfit. She's the common sense of the, of the team. Uh, you know, and I, I look at uh, people ask me all the time, how could she possibly handle you for this long? And I said, you know, for as much time as I've spent with this band program, or in a bus and in the hotel on the way someplace. I count the number of days we spent together. I think we've been together for about four and a half years total. So we're still in that early marriage stage where, you know, we still like each other and all that sort of stuff. But uh, yeah, she's, she's wonderful. I have three girls. Uh, Jessica is uh, a fourth grade teacher in Kansas City, teaches at a Title I school. She married uh, one of those guys that another K-State graduate, the ones that paints his belly purple. It's in the front row of the stadium. She was a twirl. Apparently, when we give out candy in the fourth quarter to the kids, she would take some over to Mick and his friends. I didn't know anything about this, but there's a lot of things that go on the band I don't know a lot about. But uh, so they got married. He's a great guy. He works for Cerner Medical Corporation, and they have a nice house in Prairie Village, and they're the ones with the little grandson, Caden. He's a cute cutie. My second daughter, Kelly, was in the band here. She played oboe in the wind ensemble. She just finished her DMA. She's got a doctorate in oboe performance and she wants to be a professor. She moved up to Minneapolis. She's applying for some, some jobs up there and she's playing. And, and this is a terrible time to be graduating in that, but, uh, but it'll come back around and she's a fighter and she'll get through it. And she's doing really, really well. My third daughter, Carly, uh, was in the basketball band here, played bass guitar. Uh, she got a, a counseling degree from here, psychology degree, and she got her master's from here. And she's now working at the University of Kansas as one of their counselors. Uh, and she's been there for about a year and she called me, she started laughing. She said, dad, for the first time, people put two and two together and recognize my last name. Uh, and I said, do you still have a job? She said, yes, they thought it was great. So she works at the University of Kansas. She married our drum major, Blake. 
Blake Morris. He was in a band for six years, an engineer. He's working for a, a big company in Kansas City, doing really, really well. They're living in an apartment. Uh, this is a bad time to be looking for a house because houses are very expensive, especially in Kansas City. And so they're, they're hopefully uh, going to be in that area no matter where they up. We don't know. My wife's working uh, on campus here as part of the TRIO program. Uh, she's an uh, administrator and they're doing, working with kids. She's a very people, very outgoing people person. She likes to be around uh, the kids and she does a great job with them. So we live here in Manhattan. Uh, we live, we bought a house uh, right next door to where the Hartmans used to live, Jack Hartman and Pat Hartman. Um, I was Pat Hartman's buddy for a long time till she moved into Metal Ark and stuff. God rest her soul, but uh, good people. So we, we enjoy the house. Uh, we enjoy Manhattan. The family's doing well. Everybody's healthy. Knock on wood. Let's keep that going. We're getting through the pandemic. We're looking forward to the other side and getting back to whatever normal used to be. We'll create a new normal. We are so fortunate to have you at Kansas State University, and you have an incredible family. You're surrounded by wonderful people, Courtney, Dr. Wimmer, all of the grad assistants. I mean, you are so revered by everyone that has the opportunity to work with you. And I know you're, you're too humble to really accept that. But when I go around the country and visit with alumni, um, Kristen Eck was at yeah. the Medicine Lodge event last night, immediately yeah. asked about you. And I have the opportunity and our staff does to interact with the band. And I may not know all of them, but they know who we are. And it's so nice to have them come up and share wonderful things. And um, we're just... Like I said, very fortunate to have you here and please check out the website for all of those areas that if you have a desire to contribute, it couldn't go to a better cause. And um, there is one thing that might be a new opportunity for you. Someone wants the band to sell. I came for the halftime show. So there you go. shirts, there you go. shirts that say that. So every, every parent would buy one of those. Fundraiser yeah. for you. Yeah. So, um, Good but, idea. But thank you for sharing your stories and your expertise this afternoon. We're very pleased and um, that you could be with us. And I want to thank all the participants for watching. Uh, we do record these and they're posted on our website, kstate.com. So you can view, view them in the future. And our next Wildcat chat will be held on August 23rd at 4 p.m. So please tune in for that. It will be President Myers, Provost Tabor and myself and Travis Lankner, a graduate of Kansas State University who actually was the moderator for the first chat we did, will be returning as our moderator. And with that, I want to thank everyone for uh, joining us today and go Cats. Thank you.